how much do stocks have to go up by for all Americans to retire on. Understand this dispenses with the quaint and outdated notion that profits would have to increase too, because if America ever woke up and started looking at the underlying profits of their stock portfolio, the market would be halved tomorrow. But let's just idealistically assume in a world of ponies, flowers, unicorns, and Obamacare, stock prices can go up forever for no reason at all. How much would the stock market have to increase by so we could all successfully retire? And it is here the statistics get downright gloomy, impossible, albeit a bit theoretical. As it stands today, there is roughly $12.25 trillion in retirement savings in U.S. accounts. One might think this $12 trillion would have to support the retirement of all 320 million Americans, but it only needs to support the 75 million baby boomers who are on the cusp of retiring in the short run. Still, this corroborates other statistics mentioned before as 12.25 trillion split 75 million ways is $163,333 each. Only a third of the magical $500,000 boomers need to successfully retire today. Relying on the magical, forever increasing stock market for no particular reason at all, that would imply stock and bond prices would have to go up 300 and 6% tomorrow for just the average boomer to retire. Not only is this extremely unlikely, but keep in mind this is on top of the stock market growing at twice the rate it normally should have since 1980. In short, it's mathematically impossible for the stock market to grow enough to adequately pay for one generation, let alone three. Gen X's prospects for an adequate retirement don't fare much better, but they do have hope in that Gen X, at least, has some time to work with before they reach retirement age. Gen X also boasts an average of $69,000 in retirement savings, though this statistic seems optimistically dubious. Still, assuming the traditional 8% rate of return, 2.5% inflation, and 25 years before Gen Xers retire, that $69,000 nest egg can grow to account for half the required $930,000, $500,000 adjusted for 25 years of inflation, they would need to retire. But even with this edge, to save the remaining retirement funds would require every Gen Xer to contribute $500 every month for each and every of the next 25 years, which, frankly, just isn't going to happen. Forget that the $69,000 average is optimistic and by definition means 50% of Gen Xers have less than that. Also forget that $69,000 is largely due to the stock market tripling since 2009, a performance of which is unlikely to repeat into the future. Gen X has historically lacked the fiscal discipline and therefore the disposable income to religiously adhere to such an investment regimen. Furthermore, Gen Xers are in the thick of having kids, the expense of which will make religious IRA and 401k contributions impossible. Using more realistic assumptions, I estimate the stock and bond markets would have to grow by 14% per year for every Gen X to fully retire. A rate of return that is just not going to happen. And then there's the millennials. The millennial generation brings in an entirely new mathematical impossibility into today's already mathematically impossible retirement system. Progressive credentialism. In the 1960s, a baby boomer could graduate from high school, find a job, and earn enough in a couple of years to afford a car, a house, and even a family. But today, an educational arms race is in full force as employers demand ever-increasing levels of education for increasingly petty and low-paying entry-level jobs. Want a job? You need a degree. You really want the job? Well, master's preferred. And did you get the job? Sorry, you need to continue with CPE and continuing education. And so instead of having the luxury of graduating from high school at the age of 18 and then immediately being able to go to work and start saving for retirement, we've essentially forced millennials to stay in school for 10 additional and unnecessary years only to work jobs that, unlike their 1960s counterparts, can barely support the individual, let alone a family. 
Unfortunately, this 10 lost years of labor is only half the story in that we've saddled millennials with trillions of dollars in student loans for those unnecessary degrees we demanded they get. So not only have millennials lost out on 10 years of work and production that would have gone towards retirement, we've crippled their financial futures for at least the next decade, meaning they won't be able to effectively save for retirement until they dig themselves out of their student debt hole around the age of 38. The financial projections for millennials are impossible no matter which way you slice it. Starting with nothing at the age of 38 and assuming they have 30 years before they retire, millennials will either have to fervently contribute $900 a month for each and every one of those 360 months, hoping the financial markets maintain their magical 8% increase per year, or they contribute a more realistic $500 a month but pray to the gods of magical price increases that the financial markets maintain a porn star-like performance of 11% per annum for the next 30 years. Which, again, bar a hyperinflationary environment, just isn't going to happen. 